The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always with me are Swoosh and Jondo. Hi. Hello. And, uh... We've also got the uh, guest star of the uh, Neighbours Mowing. I apologise for that in advance. <laughs> nah, nah, he, he's, <laughs> he's contributing good points. Like he, <laughs> he's the voice of the people, just in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's kick things off. Uh, the first thing we got this week is uh, Nintendo is adding a special 18 plus ca- uh, storefront onto the Japanese Switch system. I got excited when I first read this. I was thinking, there's going to be so many tentacles. And there are no tentacles. It makes me sad. Well, it's Jet Force Gemini, depending on how far you get into it, there's some tentacle monsters in the game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is only for two games, though, currently. Yeah. Yes. Uh, GoldenEye and Jet Force Gemini. And it's all just because they're, they have the 18-plus uh, version of the rating in Japan, which is rated Z. Yeah. yeah. Like, which... They have very strict um, ratings there, don't they? Like, I, I'm not sure. I don't really know the ratings of... They may I, have, I know ours they are They may fucked, have more but... strict ratings in that like, games are specifically <laughs> in a certain rating class, but I think there's yeah. more rating classes. Yeah, yeah. Because I know we had that issue when we first fought to get the fucking R eighteen rating. Um, but it's like I know the American rating system is weird. You can swear as much as you want, but you can't show uh, blood or something. And it's like it's actually gets you a higher rating to show two dudes kissing than to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. That uh, fucking weird. Yeah. But but hey, I perfect duck. <laughs> I'd, I'd absolutely love them to do a remaster of Jet Force Gemini. I fucking love that game. I never actually and, played that one. And it had a asymmetrical co-op. So I, yeah. I, I could play the game and then give a second controller to someone and they didn't run around on the screen. They literally controlled a little robot that was over your shoulder and they could use that just to increase fire. So they could use the That's same gun cool. that I was using and just spray See, more bullets. It was fucking great. That game was made by someone with a younger sibling. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Who's just like, let your brother play. Here, hold this. You can shoot from a shoulder. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Absolutely. And the, the actual multiplayer where PvP in it was a lot of fun. I had a great time with it. Nice. But, yeah, I'd absolutely love to remaster Jeff Force Gemini. It's a great game. Probably not going to. Nintendo <laughs> doesn't really do the remaster thing that much. No. Mm. It like they've took had a long st- time for him to figure out who actually owned Goldeneye to get a remaster out of that, and even that's yeah. fucking broken. Well, I mean, that's not a remaster. That was just a... Yeah. That Re-release, was the... Basically. Uh, what is it? Um, no, no, I think it is a remaster. It's uh, Yeah, it's a remaster, not a remake. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just all the thing with the textures upscaled and runs on a modern system. That's it. Yeah. It's still buggy, yeah. kind of jank Goldeneye. <laughs> The jank was fucking special in that game, though. I fucking like the jank in that one. Some of them, the jank was good. Others, not so much. Man, we all know that the best best setup was facility, slaps, no odd job. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Fuck yes. Although, like, certain games needed that jank to actually work. Like, you remember Banjo-Kazooie, how janky the controls were for that game? Like, yeah, but that's sort of what made that game. Yeah, because they made ukulele um, as the spiritual successor, but the controls were too smooth, so it, it didn't feel right. See, I disagree with that. I think the problem with ukulele is they were specifically trying to capture a vibe instead of come up with something new. Yeah, that was also because I actually think the controls being better was a good thing because old mm. '90s platformers controlled like a fucking drunk cow, particularly on the old and, '64 yeah. controller with the the C buttons as you look <sighs> around. Like, holy oh, shit! Fuck. I, I'm then, honestly surprised they didn't like crush a controller sometimes playing those games. Yeah. Then there was the uh, was it the Spyro remake where it's like I'm gonna play this and oh my god the whiplash. <laughs> I mean, oh, la- last time that we camera could do, do a, that... like a one eighty on like a dime it was fucking horrible. I mean, that was because I was specifically trying to show you how much pan whip the game had. 
Yeah. Because you can't turn the motion blur off and it just turns into a schmear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, like, I don't know. Hopefully with this fucking RA, like the this rating class in Japan, they may actually also redo the old Perfect Dark or other games mm. that would fit into this classification. I mean, as I'd much like as... To play that as well. On as the much as people like GoldenEye, I think way more people would be like, what, you re-released Perfect Dark? Fucking yeah. oath. Like... Fucking Perfect good. Dark was Goldeneye, like six steps above. Yeah, like, mm. a gun with an alternate fire. Like, holy fuck, that was awesome. And yeah, yeah just so good. Isn't so much good stuff be, in the game. Is there a remake or a new one coming soon for Perfect Dark? Uh, there's been uh, a new yeah. Perfect Dark coming since the Xbox One. Ah, yeah, yeah fair. There, there was a Perfect Dark released on that as a, no, there was a launch title, Perfect Dark for the 360. And from then, mm. they've been saying, we're doing another Perfect Dark game, and it just never came, and it's kept being pushed back, yeah. and still never... Maybe, maybe now we'll get it. We'll find it, if it, this is a resurgence, people are like, ooh, <laughs> yes, give us the thing. They're going, ooh, there's money here. Well, I, I mean, they the, probably, the game. if they ever put it out, like, it'll sell. Like, it, oh, absolutely, yeah. it'll sell. Don't, I mean, like, I don't have, I don't buy that many Switch games, but, like, if you told me that Perfect Dark's getting dropped, I would immediately go and pre-order that. Yeah. yeah. But like Absolutely. the the three sixty version of Perfect Dark or the like the the next game they made for the three sixty oh, so bad. It was terrible. But their multiplayer did something that I've never seen in another multiplayer game. Uh, the map that you played on, hmm. it opened up certain areas depending on how many people were in the lobby. If it was a one v one lobby, it was a small map. But if you had a, a third person thrown into there, it opened up an extra set of tunnels to give you another way around the areas. That's Four players good. opened up other bits. The more players you had, I think it was up to eight players into eight or 16 players on a map. If you had 16, you got to play the full map. Ooh. But it actually scaled nice. itself depending on how many players you had, which is fucking awesome. That's, That's a pretty good idea. Any other map, or any yeah. other game. Well, I mean, like, every other game just goes... This is the maps. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do things like, oh, what? Evolve it based on player count? No. Go play the 2v2 map if you've already got exactly. four people. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was just a really fucking cool thing that it had. I like that. That's actually an interesting idea. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of sad it didn't catch on. That. Well, I, I mean, the like, was pretty good. it probably didn't catch on because generally the game was like, oh, the game was garbage. absolutely terrible. Yeah, and I only played it because I love Perfect Dark on the 64. The same. But same here. I mean, yeah. The weird thing was, like, Xbox had a track record at the time for ruining games from, like, Nintendo in their updated versions. Like, that's not getting to the debate of Conker's Bad Fur Day again. Because they, they did our boy so Conker good. wrong there. Like, no, well, they did the campaign, I write, the multiplayer, they fucked up. Yeah. Let's make a Call of Duty with squirrels. Like, no, go back to what it was, you dicks. I want to be no, cavemen and raptors. Yeah. <laughs> what they really fucked, fucked over was Rare by taking such yeah. an awesome company and saying, here's a Connect, only work on Connect. No, they can play with mobile games now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've been let out of the Connect cage because no one wanted to Connect. It's only because they've completely discontinued all versions of Connect, even industrial. They have disconnected the Connect. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> what well, uh, do we want to move on to the next thing? Shut sure. Yep. So, Sony is facing a $7.9 billion mass lawsuit over store prices. Yay! <laughs> Alright, can we get some details? Because I'm a bit so, fuzzy on this one. Basically, the way th this all boils down to, um, essentially, Sony using its position as the dominant force in the market to set artificially high prices for its products on its online store. Yeah. Go and that's it. it. <laughs> That just doesn't seem surprising. It just seems like yeah. a very Sony thing to do. Like, yeah. Honestly, I, I don't think this would have been brought up if Sony wasn't kicking up a big stink about the Microsoft deal. Kicking up I, that level of stink means people started I, digging through their shit. I think it like people still would have complained about it, but they wouldn't yeah. have had the ammo to sort of bring it to this stage yeah. if the, that case hadn't gone through and shown how much of a market Sony had over everyone else. Fuck, they shot themselves in the foot with that whole debacle didn't they if, if they hadn't gone against it so hard like if no they near just, as much shit would have come out uh, if they had just shut up and let it happen instead of kicking up a stink they would not be in as much trouble as they're in now like, and Jim Ryan would probably still be the head of it 
but hey. Probably, yeah. <laughs> fuck, he's probably cursing himself at the moment. Jesus. Though, with all of this, he's probably going, yeah, it was time for me to go. <laughs> yeah. Like, at that point, when people start digging and the CEO is like, I'm out, it's like, ooh, dig further. What was he into? There has to be something fucked up there. But, yeah, no, it's... Honestly, there's I'm a happy good chance, for this court case. Well, there's a good chance that this lawsuit's not going to go anywhere. Oh, yeah, like, a company as big as Sony, they'll find a way to weasel out of it. They always I do. I mean, it, it's just low on on quantifiable damage. Yeah. Because they say that, oh, you you charge too much because you were dominant at the time. Hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, man, when you're on the top of the pile, you set your prices. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it sucks, but that's what people do. Like, we are talking before everything about the... Um, things like Patreon and everything else than the cuts that they can take like they can get absurd and they never but, used to be that bad but in this Sony was also the driving force behind the, the latest game price increase like yeah. by putting games up to 120 bucks or whatever the fuck it is now uh, I think I, it's 120 in Australia I think they only did $10 in the States yeah. and everyone went up in arms why is it $70 it's like yeah <laughs> so god like, I wish it was $70 and the main reason they could get away with that, like, uh, you couldn't have gotten Xbox Jack and their price up that much. Mm. Like, that just would have been another nail. But yeah. Sony, because they're such a market leader, could afford to do that. Yeah. Which, sure, Sony can do it because of the market leader, but you're also going to get people saying you're only able to do that because you're a market leader. If it was an even market share, then the game price would balance out a lot more. Honestly, yeah. I just wish we could sick the ACCC onto them for the fact that there is still Australia um, attacks pricing on everything that's digital. Like again, they get to set the price. They don't, I it's know, not but about it still that anymore. Sucks. It's fucking yeah. annoying. Oh, it's though. bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. There is no game reason be, that we should be charged that much. Game should be like half the price, but yeah. companies know that we'll pay a hundred dollars, so they'll keep charging a hundred dollars. Yeah, just like fuel prices don't go down. They're up God, over. Uh, they're over two dollars here, and it's fucked. Yeah, I, if I see anything below a, like two bucks now, it's like fuck. Now I have to up, uh, get fuel. Like I, I need to. It's just I it's still cheap. distinctly hate having a memory now that I own and drive a car of it yeah. being a kid and my parents going what seventy cents? Fuck that! Uh, we're going to the other petrol station. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that. Fuel, we're, where we're I'm screwed. at, uh, fuel is about a dollar eighty three, and I would fuck you and your cheap petrol. <laughs> the it closer is... you get to Sydney, the more it goes up. Last time I drove through Sydney, it was a dollar forty, and then as I got further to coughs, it went down again. Yeah, and then yeah, don't fuel up around no, right Sydney. The thing is, like you end up, people will go. To, I'm going further out the city to get get fuel. It's like unless you're going by that fucking fuel station daily, don't do that. You're wasting as much money as yeah. you would be getting anywhere else. But Queensland used to have, have the, the cheapest fuel because they had uh, fuel excise on it. Yep. And then and the yeah, state that, government decided yep. to get rid of that. So now you're yeah. stuck with the rest of us. <laughs> Yay! We're <laughs> part of the it. party now. Oh. It's fucking but dumb. Like, to circle back around, it, this lawsuit's probably... like It might get somewhere, it might not. I'd like it to mm. get somewhere, trust me. That would be cool. Oh, I would love it yeah. if one of these price-gouging pricks was held accountable. But I just don't see it getting anywhere. Yeah. No, they'll find a way around. It's the same thing with, like, the big thing. Like, Coles and Woolies, it's the open, like, open secret that they are price-gouging the shit out of Australia. Like, mm. we, know, we know this. Yeah. Um, we've seen it happening. Like, with shrinkage and prices going up and all that shit. The, oh, fuck. Uh, it recently came out that, um, I, I don't know if you remember, in the States there was that big egg shortage. Yeah. Yeah, there was no shortage. Yeah. It was three of the largest egg providers in the United States coercing to increase prices, and they were sued by Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck with their mayonnaise, son. They'll come for you. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah. It, it was just a price-fixing thing. It had nothing to do with there being a supply of egg problem. The funny thing is, every time they try this shit, they're either caught out, or it ends up being a vegan substitute becomes really popular. Because, like, yeah. you can get the vegan substitutes for it. Like, most bars here in um, Australia now use the vegan substitute for egg white, because it's better for cocktails. Like, oh, we have to make an old-fashioned? Fuck cracking an egg, we just have this weird sauce stuff. Though, uh, recently in Italy, the 
the government brought in a new set of regulations that no vegan substitute can be classed the same thing as a meat product. So you can't get uh, veggie bacon, you can't get veggie sausages because bacon and sausages are meat products. You can't get a um, you can't get a vegan steak because a steak is a fucking meat cut. So are they um, slabs and tubes now? Because honestly, I'd probably eat something called you know, a veggie tube. It right? means you also can't get almond milk because it's not fucking milk. Oh, <laughs> almond juice. I I don't know what they're calling it all, but apparently it only came in like in the last month. But yeah, so you can't. That's fucking funny. I love that. Yeah, that's so dumb. They. Like, I, I get why they're doing it. You have to make that, you know, distinct. Someone's probably got angry they picked up veggie stuff instead of real bacon. But honestly, I can't really tell the difference half the time. It's mostly just a texture thing. I mean, look, it all comes down to how you use vegan products. Yeah. I've seen lots of people, like, there's a couple of YouTube shows like Watch You Do Chefs, and they've talked about vegan products before and hmm. tried them. In situation, vegan products stand up way better than you think they would. Yeah. Like, if you go, I've got a vegan patty, and you just eat the patty, you mm. know it's not a beef patty. Yeah. Yeah. You put it on the burger with the cheese and the sauce and the onions, oh, suddenly it's a lot harder to identify. Oh, definitely. But if you put the two side by side and say, you tell me which one is meat, I will pick meat. Oh, no, you will. Oh, definitely. I'm yeah. just saying it's, they, it's they hold up texture. better in situation they, they do than isolation. They hold up better. But it's when this, like, when they're trying to replace one with the other without stating this is what we're trying to replace. Yeah, that just annoys me. I want meat. Oh like, yeah. If if I yeah. want a veggie burger, then I'm more than happy to go out and eat a fucking veggie burger. But if oh, I want to yeah. eat a a hamburger with a fucking beef patty. Oh yeah, that's that's different though. That's mm. you're now getting into like lying in product. Yeah. Yeah. Really weird. Like it's one of those things. I I will guarantee soon we'll start seeing hybrid stuff where it's like it's mostly meat and then we'll add in the fake stuff to you know basically like hamburger helper to help it through and make it you know easier more cost effective I doubt it only because those vegan products tend to cost more to make yeah the um the European Union has also started to bring in regulations against lab grown meat so that Uh, come on before it even got off the ground is already being regulated but how else will we get meat without cows? Still my favorite episode cows. of Better Off Ted that I've ever seen. <laughs> my, 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 if no one has seen Better Off Ted, for the love of God, go watch it just for this episode because it's the whole thing of um, the product tester testing meat without cows. Just this ball of meat. He's like, oh, I, I, it's a weird taste. I can't place it. It's like, uh, is, it, is it beef? No. Chicken? We'll take chicken. I'm like, no, it's uh, closer to despair <laughs> it's like does it need ketchup no no it doesn't like I, oh great episode show was so good why I got halfway one through. season what the fuck uh, because Fox was in that period of being an angsty teenager and getting everything that was popular but, so ah. bullshit anyway back to the actual thing uh, so like blocking meat without cows I mean so I get it but I just pulled up the article um the EFSA is ready to evaluate lab-grown meat applications when, uh, whenever it gets one, but it's also regulated mm. that it, uh, the lab-grown meat can't affect current meat production before it'll be regulated. Oh, okay. That's so if they produce lab-grown meat, it can't affect current meat sales mm. or they won't even look at it. Interesting. No, I, I mean, like, I feel like the wording on that's terrible, but I mean, I think yeah. the gist is, like, until we've approved it and said, yes, this is okay, mm. you can't start selling it. Yeah. yeah. Look, the one thing that I will say for vegan stuff is, like, the vegan chicken, when hot and fresh, fucking tasty. I, there are some vegan Kievs you can get from, uh, unknowingly enough, Will, uh, Coles. Um, they're fucking great. I find them better than most actual chicken Kievs half the time, because they whole consistency and they keep the fucking garlic inside but the second they cool no like just can't do it has to be hot can't reheat it tastes like rubber but yeah yeah love food podcast we fucking are (laughs) fine do we want to do the food thing now we're gonna do it later thing now let's do the food thing now we got onto it 
Right, so, given that we're back into food podcast, I swear to God, like, this is like three episodes in a row, man. This one day we'll just one. make the change, and we'll like, it's like, ten years in the future, it's like, did these guys used to talk about fucking video games? No! We're just or we're three hamburgers in a trench coat who wants to talk about video games. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we are um, man big cheese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so, as basically, it's been a long-running thing that um, that finally got resolved. Uh, mm. In Australia, the brand Hungry Jacks, which for Americans is Burger King, yeah, um, has been creating a, a thing called the Big Jack, which is yes. essentially their rip-off of the Big Mac. And it has recently been ruled that it's not copyright infringement. They can go ham. Yeah. I, I do remember at one point, like, I think it was a couple of years back, where Mac has forgot to renew the copyright for Big Mac in Europe, Scotland. I think Scotland, no, Scotland or Ireland. There, so they everywhere have released a Big Mac. And yeah, they said no, no, Mac's a, a Scottish name or whatever it is. Yeah, and yeah, they went all over it with that. I remember Hungry Jacks was taking the piss on that one as well because they made the uh, a menu called Not Big Macs. It was like, guys, you are flirting close to the line there, but I love it. <laughs> that is fucking great. But ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the the Big Jack is actually a tasty burger. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good actually. Most because like, I would prefer Hungry Jacks or Burger King for the Americans over Macca's most days. I oh, don't yeah. know why. Because McDonald's has forgotten its place. It's meant yeah. to be a fast food, get a burger and fuck off again. Not a mm. sit down, fine dining restaurant. Not just fast food, get out of here. Fast food, get out of here with your cheap food. Yeah. yeah. Like, the Americans still have a dollar menu. Like, I find that fucking weird. We don't. Yeah, we don't even have two dollar menus anymore. Ten, lucky to have a ten dollar menu. Yeah. How much are fucking, um, soft serve cones now? Two bucks? I don't know. I couldn't even tell 30 you. cent cone when I was a kid. I yeah. couldn't even tell you the last time the machine was working. I know. <laughs> I still love they got in shit from the manufacturer for that. Oh, that makes me giggle. Actually, now I need to know. I'm gonna, like, while you guys talk about stuff, I'm going to search how much a fucking soft serve cone is at Macca's. <laughs> but, like, you, it used to be, like, if you needed cheap stuff, you went to Macca's. If you wanted something that was slightly better and cost a bit more, you went to HJ's. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like, do I want cheaper and better than Macca's? Go to HJ. Pretty much. Yeah. It, it's just a no contest. And if you want better again, go to Red Rooster. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, not gonna lie. Like sooner or later, we'll get that sponsorship. <laughs> One day, if we ever get a Red Rooster sponsorship, I'd be happy. I used to work for those fuckers, and I hated them. I've only gone back now since they've changed all their menu stuff. And let's be honest, they've done well. Like, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's check out the soft serve. And let's face it, KFC can price. just fuck off. Yeah, I'm done yeah, with we, KFC. Yeah, mm. let's not deal with them anymore. Yeah, they got a long way to fucking pull their bootstraps up. Yeah. I mean, like, it, honestly, KFC smells good, but tastes like absolute shit. It, it's, it's weird and ironic that, like, in Australia, we've got the shittiest KFC, but the best Maccas. Yeah. Yeah. Because our Maccas has actual beef. Because they have to. <laughs> oh, and we, apparently we do a lot more, um, like, experimenting with burger styles, whereas America is just like, this is it. It's Maccas. Yeah. I can't it's, find a cost. That's a here. It's bad. Our KFC is like just down the road from the football ground that I played at when I was a kid, and so you go to training, and like you do two hours of training, you'd finish, and you could just smell the KFC coming over the hill. It's like, yeah. oh yeah. god damn! <laughs> That's what I swear that the smell of KFC should be a candle because I would buy that candle. Mm. Look, when I was younger, KFC was the bomb. Now, fuck that. Particularly, as we've said many times, since Red Rooster got its shit together. <laughs> I, I just absentmindedly typed in KFC Candle, and it exists, and Ooh. I might be buying it. <laughs> Fried chicken scented candle. It's got a picture of the kernel on it, so you know it has to be branded. <laughs> right, do we want to finish up the food section of the podcast, or has someone got some other food shit they want to get out of the system right now? Not off the top uh, of head. The dine-in Pizza Huts. Bring that shit back. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just bring back all you can eat in general. Yeah. Although I'm kind of annoyed because Pizza Hut doesn't deliver anymore. Really? They do? Oh, sorry. 
select locations deliver. Ah, uh, okay, yep, yep, yep. Though normally Fun. the only delivery from those you can get are from your menu logs, Uber Eats, and all yep. that kind of stuff. They're not yeah, in-house yeah. delivery anymore. Nope. Yeah, they gave up on their own in-house, definitely. And I mean, it's kind of fair. It's a dude you've got to pay who just drives pizza around, and if you have a quiet night, that dude just sits around collecting a paycheck. Yeah. I but, think only. Yeah. I think in my area, the only place that still the only pizza joint that still delivers is Domino's. Yeah, that's because they put all their money into those little bikes. That's like a sunken cost fallacy for them. And I'd rather just walk down to the end of my street and go to the Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck paying uh, delivery fees. Oh god, they're exorbitant. Anyway, we should yes. probably move off the food thing before we all get hungry and disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Definitely not sponsored by Red Rooster. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. On the food thing. Fucking tipping. Tipping on Oh, well, shit, that's right. Fuck. That was the thing we were talking about before. This is Australia. Fuck we don't do tipping. Go and get fucked. Yeah. Yeah, what? it's like the whole popping I'm up on gonna... systems and it's like, oh, would you like to add a tip? Like, nah. No, I'm good. Now, by being against tipping, I don't mean don't tip. If you yeah. want to tip your server, yeah. go nuts. That's oh, yeah. fine. I'm saying don't, as a restaurant or a platform, don't force or expect people to tip. Yeah. That's bullshit. That's not Australia. We're not that place. Like, I hate when you go to, like, put your card down to pay for something in, like, a big place, like Macca's or some shit. It's like, would you like to tip the people? It's like, guys, yeah. if you're not and paying your workers, like, I'm not... Do you want yeah. to tip me? It's like, no. No. You collect like, the wage. Fuck off. <laughs> It's like mm. those charity things that keep popping up with um, Woolies and stuff. Would you like to like, round things up? Like, my brain is weird. The fact that you're trying to force me to do this or you're stopping me from doing shit so I can move on means I'm not going to do it. Like, mm. My brain rebels. I don't know why. I'm broken. But I can't stand that. I will happily give money to charities. Absolutely. I currently do. But it's like, mm. I, don't force me or don't try and prod me to do it because that's a really fast way of making sure I never do. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, our, I was talking with you earlier on about this. Like the yeah, uh, Mister Mister Yum is uh, mm. the on online basis store for most of the restaurants in my hometown. So all the restaurants they sign up to it when you go to order online because they no longer have a fucking phone service. You fill in your order when you click to order now. The screen doesn't change, but the order now button changes to add tip, which yep. your mouse is already over the wording, so you can't see where it says add tip. If you click again, it automatically adds a 20% tip. Yeah. And just below that button is a is now a white box on a white background, which is written in gray, continue. So it's... And if you're not paying that, attention, it's easy to miss. Look, See, if you're not paying still... attention, it's easy to miss. But also, grey is the universal symbol for cannot mm. access. Yeah. Like, it should be black. That's when you know, like, I can continue. Yeah. Yeah. So, automatically adds 20%. And at the top of the screen, away from where you're looking, it has the um, alternate options for tips of... Uh, uh, it goes 5%, 20%, and then... Uh, 10 and 15 so they're out of fucking order honestly the Which default is of clicking the button one. should not be 20 no so if you yeah. just click again it automatically adds 20% if mm. you go up to where the ad like you can click continue mm. or up the top where the ad where the options are for tips it's mm. it doesn't say no tip it just says maybe next time yeah it's like no I want an option should, that says, should never be enough, fuck right? no, and don't show me this shit again. Yeah. It should not be something that you can, like, accidentally click. No. Like, and the fact honestly, that nothing changes on screen, if you've got your mouse yeah. over the wording, you won't notice that it says add tip. Mm. Well, most people will, will sit there with their finger hovering over where it just was on a phone. Yeah. Um, and that kind of stuff. Like, And most people are just like, oh, it didn't work, tap again. Yeah. And that's what they're banking on. Yeah. The fact that... It, automatically goes to 20% to me is a scumbag move yeah, like the absolutely. default if ever should always be the lowest like yeah. 
it shouldn't it's, be that hard. No, the, it shouldn't be a dark default at design. all. It should come yeah. up with like continue and then in a separate spot. Would you like to add a tip? Yeah. Yeah. No. And Probably it's like a lot it. of these companies tend to be American as a starting point. I don't think Mr. Yum is. I'm on their website at the moment. I can't see where they're based. Um, but like, I get when American systems bring in the tipping thing, like uh, Uber Eats and that kind of stuff. Yeah. They have a little, basically, they have a little button down the bottom where it says, "Would you like to tip your driver?" But it never pops up at you. It's just an option there. It's like, you know, no, it does. Button. If does you're it? going through your checkout, one of the screens you have to pass through is the tip your driver. Oh, but I'm not the used dominant, to while, but fuck. the dominant button is no. Yeah, they don't try and hide that shit. Yeah, yeah. But they I don't do force you to go through, through it and specifically and say no. This uh, button isn't for tip your driver. This no. is just do you want to add a tip? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how much the percentage that Mister Yum gets, how much actually goes back to the restaurant, or what goes to the driver, or what. Yeah, it's just fucking dodgy as and it's annoyed the yeah. shit out of me and no one else around here seems to care it's like fuck this is annoying <laughs> yeah that, that is some bullshit yeah and I, I said, don't like that you want to tip a server or a driver when they drop your food off quick fucking go for absolutely. it absolutely I'll give you yeah. like 20 bucks at the door 10 bucks at the door oh, I don't want to yeah. add it onto this no. but I want to hand that to the actual like person serving me in these cases yeah. like I, I've been out um, having dinner with mum and dad and like when we're out for that kind of stuff, we tend to tip. Um, Dad leaves a decent amount of money, but he always makes sure it goes to the person who served us, not to yeah. just the manager, essentially. Yeah. But like, there have been times where it's like, we've gone to a place like, this is for you, this is for the tip jar. Like, this mm. one goes to you direct. Put it in your pocket now. I don't care. If anyone like mentions it, get in contact. Because like, that person was great. We want to make sure mm. they got that money. Mm. But yeah. it can guarantee that the restaurants are already paying this service to run the website oh, for yeah. them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now they're just trying to scrounge you out of the top of it. Oh, Look, definitely. I would almost guarantee the point of that is, like, Mr. Yum will take, you know, 10% of the order. Mm. You've just bumped the total order price up by 20 and so yeah. their 10% is now higher. Yeah. Definitely. Like, I don't like that operation. No, no it's like, just really fucking shitty. Yeah. <laughs> if you're doing this kind of service where you're running things for them, it should not be a buy order basis. Pay by the month, go from there. And like, it's it bad be enough, like, speak. they got rid of the phone service. So, like, yeah. you can't just call up and say, hey, look, I want to order a pizza and cotillette roll mm. and whatever else, and here's your mm. price. I'll pay a delivery bloke when he turns up here. It's all online, so you have to go yeah. through this service or drive to the restaurant, in which case, I might as well eat it there. Yeah. yeah. In some cases, if you go to a restaurant, they'll still ask you to go through the app. Yeah. So we don't I want to do it here. yet to here. have that happen, but I know it can. Yeah. It's very rare, but there are places that are so integrated with certain things, like, nah, you have to go through. Same as ordering with QR codes. It just annoys the shit out of me. I'm over that. That I can, I can kind of get by... I just don't yeah, like talking it, to people. It's only two or three yeah. places that do it. Most places still have someone who comes to your table and takes the, the order for you. And oh, yeah. But here there's a couple that are starting to do the QR code thing and I actively avoid them. What I do like me. is um, certain sushi trains here in Brisbane just have a tablet at the fucking table. I like yes, that. I like, like that. The antisocial prick in me is like, yes, I will push the <laughs> buttons on the tablet and just do the thing. It's great. Does that mean you get to leave a tip for yourself? Yes, <laughs> I did the service. The tip goes to me, <laughs> and I your tip is eating too much sushi. sushi. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I will happily tip people who leave me the fuck alone. Like I am an anti-social prick at the best of times, so I'll walk. I was like, "Thank you for not talking to me. Have five bucks. Thank you. Goodbye." Like, I've done that to taxi drivers before. It's like you were very quiet and left me alone. Here you go, mate. Enjoy. <laughs> it's why I, I don't mind those QR scans. I don't mind yeah. sitting down at a table going, boop, ordered, wait for my drink to be brought to my table. I don't yeah. want to talk to anybody. I just want to order my food and not deal like, with anything. If I'm so in an antisocial mood, I like home. <laughs> yeah. If I'm going to a restaurant, I'm going there to be around people. Well, usually oh, yeah. I'll be going there to hang out with someone, not mm. deal with the fucking restaurant. That's fair enough. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. If, I, if I'm flipping between antisocial and social. One if, happens though, more than if I have to order through a QR code, I'm not tipping shit. Oh, yeah. Because you've done the serving at that point. 
Well, I mean, that's not the part that I care about anyway. No, but... Yeah, just a stand. <laughs> Pretty much, it's one of those things. Yeah. Like, no hate. We are we're just grumpy old men in the, in. <laughs> oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Again, we are in no way professionals in any of these topics. We're just a bunch of idiots. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about some different idiots? Yes, always. So, I've been having some trouble running down a proper source on this, so I will admit, mm. admit giant pile of salt on top of this. But it seems like Ubisoft might be retroactively trying to inject ads into previous Assassin's Creed games. Which is a dick move. So I don't like it. The reported thing that's happened is someone was playing Assassin's Creed Origin. And when they tried to open their map, they got an ad for the new Assassin's Creed Mirage during its Black Friday sale. And then they had yeah. to hit the map button again to get to the map. Hmm. Um, like I said, I've been unable to run down a bunch of uh, uh, some more independent sources on this. A lot of people are just reporting from the same source, um, and you know, all it takes is one person to lie, and then the echo chamber happens. Well, but, a lot of um, their their games had a store in them, didn't they? Because you could yes, get skins. They and did, stuff. yeah. And mm. Origins is the beginning of the Assassin's Creed games as a service. Yes. Yeah. So the games before that, it'd be a little harder to add into it but they've already got the framework for it. They already had advertisements yeah. in the games for other games. Yeah. yeah. But that was generally within the store bit of the game. Yeah. It wasn't this a is. full splash screen over an actual gameplay Yeah, yeah it, it didn't get in the way of gameplay previously, whereas this definitely does. Yes. The amount of times I opened a map in a game because I have the attention span of a fucking goldfish and I get lost a lot. Yes. So I open the map. <laughs> yeah, a lot of just set marker and... Walk at marker. Walk at gold yeah. point. <laughs> Even then, I wander off going, ooh, what was that marker, f- um, that marker for? I don't remember anymore. New marker. I think it'd yeah. be really hard to go back to games like fucking Morrowind, like, where it's just oh, like, uh, walk to this town and 300 paces south and then find a rock and turn left. And, yeah. You mean yeah, the game no. that actively lies to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because many of those direction guides are wrong. <laughs> yeah. So very wrong. But like, oh. without like way markers, like if that game had way markers, so much easier. Yeah. If you just got vague directions like that, I don't think you could play many modern RPGs. Definitely, particularly like, large open world games. It, it's also that annoying creeping thing because like, you know for it's not where they'd stop. At some point, there would be a timer in a game from them, which would be like, oh. You haven't opened like the thing in a while. Well, just put a thing in there, a little corner thing. It's fine. It's in the corner. Actually, I like, think I, well, Witcher Three had had some options in that to change between markers, general area, and specific point. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but like I, so you I can get you can make it as immersive as you wanted. The yeah. thing is, yeah. though, like whether this ad is real or not, or someone faked it. Sounds yeah. like Ubisoft, though, doesn't it? it does. That's the thing. It like everyone's does. jumped on the bandwagon. It's like, yeah, that sounds like something scummy they do. It, Ubisoft like, or EA? Yeah, yeah. No, I can see them leading the charge on this. Honestly, I would not be surprised if someone within that company decided to try and leak this, just test the waters. Like, <laughs> how would people react to seeing <laughs> this? Like, oh shit, they're angry. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I've got an idea that I just read about someone else put online. <laughs> oh god, if that's how it happens, I'll be so angry. Fuck. <laughs> I, I would not put it past them though and that's the annoying thing yeah like I can still see them doing this Ugh. yeah but like I, I think it was in uh, Odyssey like the one set in Greece yeah like they had ads for Phoenix Rising or yes. was it Valhalla had ads for Phoenix, Phoenix Rising but they were again if you went to specific areas for the store then it had splash screens it didn't actually take yeah. over part of the yeah. the gameplay screen it's one of those things I understand that when I open the store in a game I am acknowledging the fact that I have gone to your advertisement section I yeah. expect to be bombarded by ads there but not in the fucking menu screen for the like the yeah. map or anything else and if we let them do this if there wasn't people kicking up a stink you know they wouldn't stop there the ads would slowly start creeping other places and keep yeah. going and pushing that boundary until someone pushes back hard enough that they don't do it anymore. Yeah, but even then they just push back one step. Yeah, they don't step back altogether. No, they've they, already they made go back enough to... ground. They don't kind of go all the way back. 
Yeah, they do not cede ground. They will not give back space. Like, advertising does not back away. No. Once advertising reaches a point and you do not smack it down, it'll pop out. It's like a weed. Mm. That, that's the only reason that big, like, snap back against uh, Battlefront, or Battlefront yeah. 2, actually mm. worked. Because enough people hit it immediately saying, no, 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 this is fucking wrong. That they yeah. actually step back on the whole thing. Well, it's why we're stuck with microtransactions now. Like, no one kicked up a big enough stink when microtransactions first yeah. happened. And now we can't go back. They're integrated. Yeah. They're st- we're stuck That's with them. why we're stuck now with battle passes and oh, why fuck, loot boxes passes. are slowly phasing out because there's a little bit of continuous stink kicked up about them. Yeah. Well, that's taken actual governments to get angry and be like, stop it, you're promoting gambling to children. Mm. Yeah. But even then, they're still trying to... No, oh, we're just going to call it something different. We Speaking got of not- calling things different, <laughs> go for it. Um, what was the like? Disney's trying to make oh, NFTs okay. without saying it's NFTs. <laughs> so, Disney's new big thing is they want to start selling essentially NFTs, but instead of calling it an NFT, it's a digital pin. I love the fact the response from the internet has just been everyone. You mean NFTs? Did the autocorrect kick in? Did did it change <laughs> digital pin? Like is from the NFT? digital pin supposed to be on your digital lapel? Yeah. <laughs> no, you got to buy that separately. It's they're, Disney. They're, they're just collectibles, <laughs> and it's all blockchain-based. It's just an NFT. Buy another name, because clearly they're like, oh, wow, if we called it an NFT, it, it'll just get smacked, because no one likes that digital pin. That'll separate it enough, and that'll make <laughs> um, it okay. I love that the fact that they just thought, like, ah, no, no one's going to question this. Like, motherfucker, we're, we don't like this. We're yeah. going to say Just things. Bad. No. Yeah. Like, Disney's already had a fucking hard run with any movie they've released in the last few years. They oh, don't yeah. need more people going, no, bad. Yeah. Don't do this thing. I tell you what, like, redheads have been getting a bad rap in Disney at the moment. They've changed every redhead. Like, they're no redheads longer redheads. have always anymore. had a bad rap. Oh, yes. I mean, fair. <laughs> but it's one of those things where it's like, we all the redhead characters, characters from Disney. actual movies people like, yeah. and now they've all been fucking replaced. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't get to exist anymore. They're slowly no. phasing you out like the gene. But, uh... Brave right, is I still at peak. <laughs> yeah. It's a good peak, though. Like, fuck. You just need to go back to fucking Scandinavia, and then, you know, the porcelain-skinned redhead is just like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. Jesus yes. Christ. I, nothing I wrong mean, with it. Stop replacing fun. characters. Like, uh, actually, I read a thing the other day. Uh, South Park did a whole thing on the, the Pandaverse or pandering yeah. to people. Yeah. And Sony had, or oh, Disney had a whole thing. Like, they fully cracked the shits. But yeah. South yeah, Park went so hard on the the head departments of Disney for wanting to replace everyone. And, I, like, Cartman's whole thing of, like, make him female, make him gay. And no, that's, yeah. that's so the entire fucking that thing. Was, that wasn't Cartman. That was actually their character well, it was, of It was the, the Cartman character of, of this person. Yeah. Hmm. Kinda. Like, he wasn't playing a character. Um, yeah. It was it was their piss take on the, the one of the head CEO, writers, CEOs kind of, yeah. of Disney. Um, yeah, they used Cartman's body shape for it yeah um but it wasn't actually cartman doing a bit um yes. but yeah the catch cry of put a chick in it and make a gay make yeah a lame, like that's all that character <laughs> fucking yells the whole thing yeah it's so strange i i hate the whole entire thing honestly i'm okay with like um like the most recent little moment i still haven't watched it i really need to but, like, I'm fine with that kind of change simply because it made more sense thematically and where they are. Like, if that's the change, fine. Change the whoever's playing it for that. I understood the One Piece stuff where they actually went and got actors represented by the nationality they're meant to be in the manga. That's fine. It's when you change shit for the sake of changing shit that annoys me. Like, changing things for the sake of being, oh, we're woke now. It's like, Why? There are other places you could have put this without it being key ho- like you know shoehorned in. You could have made this functional, but no, you just shoved it in for the sake of look, we're woke now. Please stop yelling. But please, just a bit no. of forethought. Panda right. only makes them yell more. 
It really does. Honestly. You can't shall make we, everyone happy. Shall we move on? Probably a good idea. Safe option. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We hit oh, the eject it, button. It's a pretty safe option because I think everyone's going to be... Well, I know a certain section of people aren't going to be okay with this laughing at this, but, you know, the CEO of Binance has pled guilty as well as the company itself to money laundering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you didn't see this coming funny. from a mile away... You really haven't been fucking I mean, looking. we've known that crypto was being used for money laundering for years. It was one of its selling points, I swear to fucking God. Take all your dirty money, buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin gets moved through some tumblers for clean money. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically actual people on Tumblr. Uh, just a couple of tumblers. <laughs> just send it to them, send it back. It's, all I, <laughs> it's just a process called a Bitcoin tumbler where it gets moved through yeah. a bunch of wallets so it doesn't look like it just... Wait, here, here, cash out. Pretty much. Um, like, when it starts hopping around, it gets a bit difficult to follow. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Yeah. Um, so, it's fucking funny. It's one of those things like, we made a currency that no one can track. Oh, God, no, criminals are using it. Who would have thought? I mean, that was its key use to begin with. <laughs> it's just yeah. buying drugs. Yeah. Oh, God. But, I mean, yeah. like... It's just funny, and the the thing is though, like, this is the CEO of of, of Binance, and Binance mm. is like the second, I think it's the second biggest uh, crypto exchange next to yeah. Coinbase, mm. and yeah, fucking like, which Coinbase must be shitting themselves at the moment because like any government agency who's looking into like these guys be like, if the second biggest is doing it chances are everyone below them and the people directly above them are also doing this. Yeah. Let's well, start looking. I think the timing is particularly interesting because the um, the verdict came down on the uh, guy who did uh, was it FTX? Oh, yeah. Um, and he was getting jail time. Yeah, he's getting And then s- suddenly the CEO of Binance is like, yeah, money laundering is happening. I plead guilty. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I think they've all seen the writing on the walls because the fact that that guy is going down and going down hard... Um, everyone's like, ah, we can't just yell gu- uh, gibberish at them in techno speak and hope they don't pay attention. They're actually, mm. they're doing stuff. They have people on payroll who know what they're talking about. Oh no. Oh god, they're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's the thing. I think crypto has gotten by for so long because no one's wanted to do, like, no government has really wanted to delve into it because that's a lot of information to sift through. You know and they don't want to learn. <laughs> you know what's super dumb? Me? I think it was... I mean, I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the crazy thing is, like, crypto had been flying, like, just under the radar for so long mm. until NFTs happened. Yeah. Yeah. And NFTs then everyone really were the nail knew the about them. Yeah, like, NFTs were the nail in the coffin, especially with how many scams popped up for them. Yeah. Uh, and the amount of scams for, uh, like, the rug pulls and things in cryptocurrencies and that kind of stuff. Certain people have been getting by on that so, so long. One of them is an Australian prick, and I can't remember his name. Honestly, I keep forgetting it because I don't want to remember that scumbag. Yeah, he's Queensland based. He's an absolute horrible human being. Like he has scammed millions out of people. Like his family has come out going, "We don't want to be associated with him. He hasn't given us any money. We don't like him. He owes us money. Fuck him." Yeah, but like the amount of celebrities that have been done over the NFTs is fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is. That whole uh, that whole board ape thing where they tried to have the a conference and everyone got a sunburn because they bought the wrong fucking UV lights. That was just <laughs> fucking gold. Yeah, you guarantee they just bought the most expensive ones on the market, which is UVC, which used to sterilize and fucking sunburn. Like cool. they caught fucking sunburns. That's just gold. Mister Legend, that was the prick. Uh, <laughs> the guy who changed his legally changed his last name to Legend. <laughs> uh, he is not a legend. No, no, he's an absolute pr- prat. The like, running uh, skin. Was it fucking uh, Seth Green bought one of those bored apes and then wanted to make oh, a, yeah, a like, TV show off it and then the thing got stolen and oh my god, no, but now he's been given it back. It's like... He bought it back. He paid the ransom. Yeah, he did. Uh, why would anyone give a fuck, really? Yeah. Like, you've no bought one. a thing that's not meant to be traced and then it got stolen from you. Actually, that's something. What do you expect possibly. anything to happen about that? Yeah, like especially when of, the thing you got was a non-valuable JPEG that was mass-produced yeah, yeah. through an AI. Like you own the original. Like we can just someone can copy and paste it. Oh no, yeah. you've lost the the thing for it. 
But um, what was it recently that popped up? My brain just derailed. Continue. We'll, we'll, <laughs> it'll come back. Uh, okay. <laughs> it'll pop back in this, there. Uh, but this yeah, one. it kind of feels like the, the big rise of, of NFTs has caused a lot more scrutiny on, on cryptos because mm. it became more well known and then people started doing dumb shit and now these big crypto bases are oh fuck people are actually looking at all the kind of quasi illegal shit we do yeah oh I remember the thing um recently a bunch of uh, countries or governments came together saying we're no longer going to deal with ransomware we're not going to pay the ransoms for it anymore so like you know when ransomware takes over a company yeah. and it's like oh well, we have to do this or we you know we lose this amount of data or that kind of stuff mm. a bunch of them are just going Nah, we're done. We're just going to re like refresh back to a few hours previously. Our IT teams are going to keep constant yeah. updates. We're not going to pay you shit anymore. Fuck off. I remember one time I actually got ransomware on my computer. Yeah. Um, but it was so easy to get around. Like, it was a yeah. joke. Boot into <laughs> safe mode and go back. And, like, a no, I didn't even have to do that. Um, it, 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 it actually loaded itself into the BIOS. Ah, Okay. So no matter how you booted, it would always boot into the ransomware. Hmm. Um, but given the fact that it was, you know, one, of, it was just like, oh, we've got your picture, and we'll we'll do all kinds of bullshit with it. There was no webcam on my computer, so they had dick shit. Yeah. Um, all I had to do was pop the CMOS battery to cause a full reset of uh, flash of the BIOS. Put the CMOS battery back, and the ransomware was gone. Nice. Like, oh god! I, so, I like I'm not I'm not making fun. Like there's some fucking malicious shit out there. Oh, there's it's some fucked up. Absolutely. Fuck, yes. But some stuff is just like this is laughably weak to work, man. How do <laughs> how do people not? Like I will admit I have a probably above average IT knowledge. Mm. So doing something like popping a CMOS battery was easy. Yeah. But like for more normal people, not so much. Like, it took me five minutes of googling to know how to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, ransomware stopped being a thing once our phones were capable of searching the internet effectively. Yeah. Like, we have the... Because, like, ransomware was uh, really useful back when the internet was still relatively young. Where it's a matter of, you can't actively search for this thing or a method around this thing. Mm. Like, we have I'll the have technology. We can rebuild them. Yeah. Mm. It's great fun. But I just like the fact that a bunch of companies like, fuck it, we'll take the loss of, like, a couple of hours of data and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, like, good call. Oh no, we lost a couple of orders, and people will understand. We'll just have to think. Sorry, ransomware. If you made an order within these times, please redo it. Mm. Yeah, it's hundred percent. This Binance, like, they've agreed to pay a whopping four point three billion dollar fine yep. for all the shit that's going on. Like the fact that it's a fine and not jail time is fucking annoying, though. Yeah, that's the actual company, company, not the CEO, not the individual. Ah, yeah. yeah. I don't think Honestly, the CEO has actually the been. The CEO but, hasn't actually been tried yet. Yeah. No, I think he's it's because pled, they've, they've come guilty. forward and saying, "Hey, this is what's happened." Is the only reason that hasn't happened. Probably. Mm. But four point three billion dollars, like Sony bought Bungie for three point six. Like, yeah, that's a a large fucking chunk of change. Yeah. yeah. The weird thing is, like, the fact that they've come forward going, "Yeah, no, it was we're money laundering that kind of stuff." That means they've had time to prepare what they're going to show them. Oh, yeah. It also means they've had adequate time to effectively get rid of data. Not just oh, delete it. Burn but, evidence. <laughs> yeah. If they Hard drives done, have been magnetized kind of thing. If they could have done that, they wouldn't have been caught laundering yeah. money. Hmm. Oh, it's one of the points like the writing is on the wall. We can't get rid of everything quickly or without exposing ourselves. That's get the, the whole most point, sensitive Swoosh. shit. It's on the blockchain. You can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's indelible. <laughs> yeah. Because oh. really, yeah, a lot of it's just tracking uh, Bitcoin wallets. Once you know, um, like Bitcoin's nowhere near as anonymous as people think. Well, it is, but it isn't. Once the you coin have itself, that access, well, the coin itself is anonymous. Like it has yeah. no tracking in it, but you can track the wallet. Hmm. And once you know the wallet is definitely associated, like if I know Swoosh's wallet, I can follow any coin that leaves or enters that wallet. Yeah. And I know that like, Switch had it. Like, it's it's not anonymous anymore. Yeah. So all they really need to do to track stuff onto Binance is go, here's some crummy, scummy terrorist group. This is their Bitcoin wallet. Let's follow the money. Yeah. 
it used to be a lot harder to track because only because government agencies weren't built for it mm. like they didn't have the infrastructure to track it down now they do like they do it quite just, often yeah maybe they just got a bunch of ex crypto bros the guys who got fucked over and be like hey wanna wanna join the CIA <laughs> I know there's a there's a bunch of crypto wallets that have like like dumb amounts of crypto in them mm. that the people who stole it can't touch yeah only the because they touch it they get yeah. swarmed because like, there's a bunch of government agencies that are like, we know what that wallet is. If yeah. anything ever comes out of that, kill them. Yeah, just go for it. It, it means it's, it's definitely fucked. Yeah. yeah, fair. It's just kind of funny. You've got all the money in the world sitting in your wallet, ready to go! You can't spend a fucking dime. <laughs> can't do anything with it. That's literally someone's robbed a fucking genie, and the genie goes, hey, guess what? Here's all the money. <laughs> he just can't spend shit. <laughs> oh, God. Great genie wish. I love it. I'm going to have to remember that if I ever run a game in like a modern setting. <laughs> I wish I'm... for billions of dollars. Okay, it's all in Bitcoin. Have fun. <laughs> Here, have a Bitcoin wallet that's being watched by the CIA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's fucking dumb. I, I am glad that NFTs have put that nail in the coffin, though. Like... The amount of scams that were popping up with NFTs and like any kind of cryptocurrency were getting out of hand. Oh yeah, I mean, it probably didn't help that you know guys like Logan Paul and those were were kept doing all those pump and dump scams and stuff. So it became very publicly known like what it is and how it works and yeah, yeah. I mean, like and then you've got um, guys like CoffeeZilla who've been like ripping the whole. Pull the curtain back, see the. Honestly, the, it's I only not the recently wizard behind found the curtain. Him. Yeah, I only recently found him due to some shit popping up. I love his stuff. It's yeah, great. he's great. Absolutely amazing. Uh, very in depth. That. Very fun. I've got a, an older person at work, and they came in the other day, and they were asking everyone, "How do you buy a Bitcoin? Like, where do you where do you buy a Bitcoin? Like, why? <laughs> Tell me There's why eight. the fuck you want to know where to buy a Bitcoin." They said oh, a thing popped up on my on my computer saying uh, oh, there's no. viruses on there and I need to buy a Bitcoin to get it off there. It's like yeah. no, 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 no. Like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that I, at all. Like, I find it funny fuck. if you go to if you go to the Apple Store to buy like Apple um, iTunes cards, they actually now have to ask, but are you buying this for yourself? Is this for you or yeah. people you know? Or are you buying this because someone online told you to? Like, yeah, fuck. the scammers are redeeming them in in iTunes cards now since they can't get gift cards. Yeah, yeah. I, they switch between them to be honest because they started off with iTunes and then it went to gift cards and then they're all slowly getting wise, so they kind of cycle between them. I think, it's more, the like, off them. I think it's more because like gift cards are unreliable. Yeah, you can you can show them a fifty dollar gift card and give them the number and then it turns mm -hmm. out there's five bucks on it. Yeah. Whereas a twenty dollar iTunes card is always a twenty dollar iTunes card. Oh yeah, it's messy. I don't. But like you it. know, fuck those guys. Absolutely, yeah. fuck those guys. Absolute cunts. I don't want you fucking idiots calling up my mom, tricking her into thinking she needs your fucking bullshit, and then paying uh, her her hard earned cash to some wanker mm. because he's lying to her. Yeah. Thankfully, Honestly, my I, mom's wise enough to always call me first if anything yeah. gets wibbly. Yeah. But not everyone's mom does that, or dad, or sister. I have drilled it into my family at this point that, no, Microsoft and Apple will never call you directly. Like, yeah. but they're I, not going to do it. it. It's happened for years. Like, they even take, they've yeah. taken cash yeah. for fucking years. Like, I, I worked in a club a while ago, and there was a, an older board of director there. And he was having troubles with his laptop, so I said, I'll come around and fix it for him. Like, have a look at it, see what you need done with it. Mm. And on his desktop, he had four different receipts where he'd paid several hundred dollars to remove a virus. And he kept saying, oh, but they removed it, but then it wasn't gone. It kept coming up again, so I had to pay it again. It's like, Fuck. God fucking damn, no. Like, God damn. They, Man, well they pegged retirement. him good. Oh, absolutely. It's like, dude, No. They never respond to these fucking things. No. Yeah, it's the same with those ones that say, "Oh, we've got your nudes." Like, all right, good, <laughs> good luck. Like, are you traumatized? Is that is that why you're contacting me? Do, do you what want do you reparations? Think? Should I shave this area? <laughs> yeah. It's always oh, the same. Nuts. Can I get Honestly, like, you? <laughs> th those ones are just like scatter shot into the wind to see who they catch. It's like someone's taken nudes and those are leaked. Like, 
I I just haven't taken nudes. Like I'm an ugly <laughs> would motherfucker. Like why would I do one? that? <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, you want uh, more? Is that like hold close up? <laughs> I remember that one of the the those robo calls I used to get was constantly, "Have you been in a car accident? Why is <laughs> that your call to open? Yeah, <laughs> have you been in a car accident? Yes, thank you, mysterious stranger. <laughs> that sounds almost threatening. Am I about to be? <laughs> <laughs> All these driverless vehicles. <laughs> have you been in a car accident? Would you like to be? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. God, like it's so fucked. Yeah, all that whole phone, internet, fucking email scam shit needs to fucking go away. Like Absolutely. the fact that it became so prevalent in recent years is very annoying. Well, particularly Although, during Rona, when people were sitting at home mm, with nothing yeah. else to fucking do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take long to create a strip that just robocalls people. It's fucking easy. I mean, like you, you want to to feel the catharsis? Go watch Jim Browning on YouTube. Yeah. And I just that. watch him take down fucking scam centers. It's Probably like, 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 I still get calls from, um, like, you answer the phone, it goes, hello, this is immigration office. Do you yeah. want English or Chinese? It's like, well, okay, let, let's see how far this goes. I'll, English. And then it carries on in Chinese for about five minutes, and then just the line cuts out. It's like, you're not even going to try and give me a payoff? Come on. I want to yeah. know. <laughs> Fucking horrible. Actually, that the, probably wasn't actually. Now, that wouldn't have actually been someone trying to to call you to get something. That would have been them checking if your phone works. Yeah. So There's they can sell your words. phone number onto another company, who then use it to front it to a. a because I've had ones like, where you pick it up and all you hear is someone reading a like a nursery rhyme. Yeah. That's not a phone call. That's literally just harvesting phone numbers that they know are active. That's why I, I don't even answer. Like, I want I more know. of them. Unfortunately, I don't get to do that. <laughs> yeah, I get too many calls to do with my dad from numbers I don't know. So it's yeah. like, fuck! I've got to pick every one of these up. The scary thing <laughs> is, that there's a bunch now that are using um, the AI voice cloning, where if they can get a hold of samples of your voice, they can try and recreate your voice using AIs. It's not great, but it can fool a few people of the elderly persuasion who can't hear as well. Mm. and it starts being like they've cloned a voice and then they call you as the as your mother like oh I need money oh they're gonna throw me out of the house I need money and they're just using that now which is scary and I don't okay. like that that's fine that's absolutely like, cool god damn it we need a we need a heartwarming takeaway for this fucking episode this got really depressing <laughs> yeah it did <laughs> fuck why did we blow our food news at earlier on it was supposed to be the happy ending buffer we, we got hungry and we skipped ahead god damn I've, I've got a, a packet of shapes I'm gonna eat with chopsticks if you don't know to eat fucking shapes and any other chip with fucking chopsticks oh fuck like, yeah do, it. do you believe we discussed this last week <laughs> we have but it's worth repeating cause like yes, I swear to god the amount of keyboards it, I've saved it's a PSA is like having a for enough. anyone whether you use a controller a keyboard mouse anything use chopsticks yeah. to eat your chips yeah <laughs> It's fucking great. Like nothing will be covered in weird Cheeto dust anymore. It's yeah. great. I love it. Absolutely. And like, I don't know about you, but like, I have big old fat hands, and oh, yeah. a lot of chip pa- chip boxes aren't fat hand suitable. Friendly. They're absolutely yeah. Not. I also they are friendly too, though. Fucking chopsticks. Yeah. Fucking oh. Although I have found, I started using chopsticks at one point for snacks, so I could like it would slow down my snacking. No, I just got better at using chopsticks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad uh, skill to have, by the way. <laughs> it's pretty good. Like, the amount of times I have managed to get stuff out of a drain using chopsti- uh, chopsticks, so I like, dropped it down there. It's like, fuck. But I can get the thing. <laughs> ah, there it is. A happy takeaway. <laughs> Yay! We got some serotonin in there. Save my food. food. A happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Still, swear to God, this is not a food podcast. Not yet. No. Ten more, t- no. ten more years. We're not three burgers in a trench coat wanting to talk about video games. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> we are just those reject McDonald's characters that no one talks about anymore, like the Grimace. I mean, given the fact that his drink was murdering people, I don't think uh, he's quite forgotten. <laughs> that is true. He, he was... Uh... I think it's more like Mayor McCheese. Um, is the uh, hamburger was... still around? Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's really just... Not as much. It's what mostly was the just a bird. uh, birdie. Yeah, like what was it meant to be though? Like <laughs> a, a duck. Bird? 
No, it like had a bill. It was a duck. Because like the grimace was meant to be, I'm assuming after food depression, but there was like fries and nuggets used to run around with them as well. Yeah, yeah, the little things, the yeah. fry guys. But like, like I, they don't use Man McCheese anymore. And I, I, there was a, I think it was like a, there was a cop. I think it was like a Big Mac. Oh yeah, yeah, um, uh, Captain Big Mac or like something like that because he was a. Yeah. He was an Irish stereotype cop, essentially. But yeah, there's all those fucking... Ca- they're who we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we escape and given containment. The fa- and given the fact that Man McCheese and that cop both have a giant head that's a burger. Yeah. <laughs> there's and no nepotism push- in that place, horse. So, no. so what, no, what is it? I'm Man McCheese, John Doe's the, the, um, the cop and... <laughs> Swoosh is three fire guys in a shirt in a fucking trench coat. <laughs> no, I'm just like that weird like cousin cheeseburger. Hey, I need a job. <laughs> Look, man, stop eating yourself, and it won't be so bad. <laughs> but I'm so delicious. <laughs> On that creepy note, I think we're done for the week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have a good one. Bye. See ya. <laughs>